from our body fluids practice problem set. And so in this situation, we're looking at a variety of different volume osmolarity diagrams, and we're asked to predict which one of these volume osmolarity diagrams do you think would be most indicated if a person either drank a lot of seawater or they ate a lot of salt without drinking any water. So we're thinking about a situation where both of those could occur. So if we look at our normal volume, osmolarity diagram shown up in the upper left-hand corner, what we would see is that our intracellular fluid is shown in a yellow box on the left-hand side of this diagram. Our extracellular fluid is indicated on the right side in the blue box. So our black line that surrounds the volume osmolarity diagram is actually indicating normal. So this is a normal volume for each of the body fluid compartments and normal osmolarity as well. Now what we can see though are changes to that normal value, such that, remember we're anchored right here, if there were an increase in the volume of the intracellular body fluid compartment, that would show us shifting the box outside, as you see here in response A, to the left hand side of the black box. So that would indicate an increase in intracellular volume. We might also see, if we go the opposite way, an increase in the extracellular volume with a movement of the blue box outside of our black lines. So we can see changes in volume. If you decrease volume, you'd see the exact opposite movement. You can also see changes in osmolarity as well. So if osmolarity were to increase, that would be a movement of the boxes up above the box. If osmolarity were to decrease, we would see movement of the boxes down below our black box. So what we need to do is actually walk through what we think would be happening in this situation to both the volume of the intracellular and extracellular body fluid compartments as well as the osmolarity of the body fluid compartments if in fact someone were to drink seawater or eat a lot of salt. Um, so we went through some steps in your notes of ways that you could figure out how to solve these problems. So step number one was to determine the effect on the extracellular fluid volume. So that's where we said to start with. What do we think would be the effect of this situation on the extracellular fluid volume? Well, normally that's a really good place to start. And this question is a little bit difficult because we have two different situations. So if we were to drink seawater, Okay, certainly that would cause an increase in the extracellular fluid volume. We can imagine you're intaking fluid, so that would certainly increase our extracellular fluid volume. It's a little bit tougher to say when you eat the salt. Certainly we're not going to be taking in any water per se, but because you have a lot of salt in the system, water tends to follow salt, so you might be retaining more fluid inside the body. So based on this one fact, we couldn't necessarily say if there'd be a large scale effect on the extracellular fluid volume when you eat a lot of salt. So that one's a little bit tough to say. We may have to go to step two in order to further determine what we would expect to see. All right, so step two, then we determine the extracellular fluid osmolarity. Now this one should be a little bit easier for you. Certainly seawater is going to have a lot of sodium chloride and eating salt is going to be a lot of sodium chloride. So we see that there's an increase in the sodium chloride. Certainly these are going to be very hypertonic. Okay. So that seawater is going to be very concentrated, a lot of sodium chloride and a little bit of water, and so we should certainly see an increase in the osmolarity. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at in our answer choices is a situation where there's an increase in osmolarity. Remember what we see that represented on as our diagram is an increase of those yellow and blue boxes above our black line. So if we were given all of the different answer choices just based on that, we should be able to eliminate A, 
C and D. Those are not very likely because we know that there's going to be an increase in osmolarity of that extracellular fluid. So that only leaves us with B and E to start off with. Now, for step three, if we move on, Step three is to determine, well, because of those changes in extracellular fluid volume and osmolarity, what would this do to our intracellular fluid? So we have to be thinking about, we've had certainly some definite changes in the osmolarity of our extracellular fluid. What would that do to our intracellular fluid? So what I'd like you to do is just imagine a situation where we had a beaker and we had a partition down the middle. And let's say that we had some non-penetrating solutes. We had our sodium and chloride. And let's say that there was a lot of those solutes on the right-hand side, okay, and very few of those solutes on the left-hand side. And we said that this is a non-penetrating solute. What we would generally see in this situation is water is going to move to the area of high solute concentration by osmosis. So we would see the water moving from this left hand side where there's a relatively low concentration of solutes to the right hand side where there's a high concentration of the solutes. And so what would happen is when you have this uh, semi-permeable membrane that our solute can't get across is we're going to see osmosis, that movement of water towards the high solute concentration. And this is analogous to what we would be seeing in this problem. We already said there's an increase in the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid. What the body always attempts to do is to match osmolarities of intracellular to extracellular fluid. Our extracellular fluid had that large increase in the sodium chloride. It didn't go into the cells to a large degree. Remember that sodium chloride stays on the outside of the cells when it's given to the body. So what you would see is a shift, just like we saw down here with our water by osmosis, of fluids from the intracellular fluid space into the extracellular fluid space. So that water would be moving by osmosis into the extracellular fluid. So based on that reasoning, where we have a decrease in the intracellular fluid volume, Okay, and we're still going to see an increase in the intracellular fluid osmolarity because we have all of this new sodium and chloride on the outside and the water is leaving the intracellular fluid space. What we would see is a situation that most closely aligns with response B. So we had an increase in the osmolarity of our fluid, certainly because we've added in all of the sodium chloride, whether it's in the seawater or in the salt. And we also see this shift of fluids from the intracellular space into the extracellular space, the movement of water by osmosis to try to equalize our osmolarities on either side of the plasma membrane. So in this case, our best response would be response B, which is also response B down at the bottom. Okay, hopefully this helps you clarify your understanding of this complex problem that involves a lot of different components that you had to understand about sodium and chloride and also body fluid compartments. Um, so as always, if you have any remaining questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you.